Hello lovelies, how have you been finding the first couple of weeks back at school? Um, I know for some of you, you will have just gone straight back in, no problem, be happy to see lots and lots of other people. But I also know for a lot of you, there are lots and lots of things that are making you anxious. So in this video we are going to talk about back to school anxiety and then we are going to talk about any worries you have about the vaccine. With going back to school after such a long period of change and disruption, you know, especially after the long summer holidays where maybe you didn't actually see or talk to or interact with many other people. The idea of being crammed into a classroom with 30, 35 people again, or bustling down corridors shoulder to shoulder with people as you try to get from one location to another location really quickly. Um, some schools will still be wearing masks, some schools won't be wearing masks anymore. Some schools will still feel like it did during the, the midst of the pandemic, where some schools will have changed things there, so they're pretty much back to pre-pandemic normal. -ness. And depending on how you are as a person, depending on all the different things that have gone on in your life, you're going to react to this very, very differently. It is perfectly normal to feel anxious about going back to school. We have been told for so long that we need to social distance, that we need to wear masks, that we need to do this, that we need to do that. And then back in school again after summer holidays and it's really, really hard to do all of those things. It's really hard to social distance in school and it's really hard to wear a mask the entire time. Um, you've got to take it off at some point, even if it's just at lunchtime. So I know lots of you are going to be worried about getting the virus in school and if not necessarily about making yourself ill, taking it then home to people at home and making them ill. You might live with somebody who's elderly or you might live with somebody who's very clinically vulnerable or you might just be worried about any of the grown-ups at home getting it and becoming ill. This is a completely normal way to feel. Do not worry about it. You might be worried about the disruption that you've had to your learning. All of the missed learning over the past two years where maybe you couldn't access an online lesson for some reason or maybe you were ill and had to miss a whole chunk of school or maybe you just couldn't do very much because you're so busy with all of your responsibilities at home. That might be the sort of thing that's making you feel anxious, stressed or worried or it might be all of the disruption, or not necessarily disruption, but the unknown about this year. We are like 99% at the moment that exams are going to happen in 2022, but that's not 100. And we can never be sure that exams are going to happen until we actually have an exam period. So the, the uncertainty and the disruption about all of this is something that's going to be contributing to people's anxiety and people's worries. Now I know I've said a lot of things that could be making you anxious, um, but I just want to reassure you that lots and lots of other people are feeling like this, even if they don't necessarily look on the outside to be feeling anxious. You yourself might be doing some things that are a bit slightly different and don't realise that actually just, just like uh, a symptom of anxiety. For example, you might be finding it really hard to um, like motivate yourself to do things, you might be finding it really hard to get out of bed or to do your hair or your makeup how you used to and this is all kind of like an underlying symptom of anxiety, of stress, potentially even leading into things like depression. But there are lots and lots of things that you can do to help yourself if you're worried about any of these things, if you are in any way concerned about these things. First of all, take some time to really sit down and not get too caught up in the, the busyness of everyday life. So something like mindfulness is a great thing for you to practice. Um, if you don't really know what that is, there are loads of great apps out there on the, um, the internet 
Um, one that I like is Headspace, and the first bit is free. It will basically teach you how to do all the, the exercises for free. And even just taking like two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you can find out of the day really, really benefits you, your mental health. Another thing that is really good is something as simple as just like putting your phone down and going and reading a book or a comic. Do not sit on your phone and read the news or be on social media because that will literally just make things worse. Um, social media is just anxiety inducing so just give yourself a break from it. Put your phone away, go for a walk, walk the dog, go and do some exercise, go and play football, go out with your friends, read a book but just leave your phone alone. Because all of the, the news, the statistics, the, the stories, the things that people are saying on social media, first of all, they're not always necessarily true or necessarily factually accurate. Um, a lot of the stuff is just um, sensationalized headline clickbaits to um, scare you a little bit. And if you just see the headline, you don't click through and read all the stories and go and do the background research on it, it can just really, really feed into people's anxieties. So one of the great things to do is just to leave your phone alone. If you leave your phone downstairs, you are much more likely to get a better night's sleep instead of having all those notifications pinging at you all of the time. Now, I know some of this anxiety, some of this worry might be related to the vaccine, which is being rolled out to younger teenagers. Now, you might be absolutely adamant that you definitely, definitely want to have it, but the grown-ups at home aren't very sure about it, or the grown-ups at home are kind of like you have to have it and you're kind of like I'm not sure I want a bit more advice or you might be living with someone who is very very strongly anti-vax or it might be a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle who is pestering or harassing you and sending you lots of information saying you have to do it this way you have to do it that way or it might even be one of your friends at school who feels very very strongly one way or the other um there are lots and lots of things to take into account here if there is this big disagreement about whether you're going to have the vaccine or whether you're not going to have the vaccine with the people at home or with your friends or with people in your extended family the best thing that you can do is sit down and talk to them clearly and sensibly. If somebody is sending you lots and lots of information that you're not very sure about, what you can do is go and find a reliable source of information to follow that up. There are loads and loads of doctors and healthcare professionals out there who are doing a fantastic job of kind of like feeding really good information back to people so that you can make your own decision about this. I am not going to tell you what you should do that is 100% completely up to you and the other people in your lives. But I know it can be really, really stressful if there is somebody in your life who is so, so strongly this way or so, so strongly that way. And it can almost kind of like lead to a little bit of a harassing situation if you don't 100% agree with them and they're trying to push you one way or they're trying to push you the other way. The best thing you can do is to find out as much information as you can for yourself from reliable sources, please. Um, I know I am on social media, um, but I do have a science degree and I am married to a scientist with a PhD in microbiology so I would like to think I know quite a lot about this however I am not a vaccine expert so I am not going to go around telling people what they should or shouldn't be doing somebody who has an Instagram account where they decorate houses is definitely not qualified and not I'm just making that up I'm not picking any particular person but they are definitely not qualified to um, tell you that you should or shouldn't be doing anything unless it's decorating houses. There are lots and lots of very qualified doctors out there who are giving out loads of great information which you can go and look up. Um, so please guys, the most important thing this year, the thing that I'm really, really gonna be focusing on is looking after your mental health. And I just want you to take away the fact that lots and lots of people are feeling really, really anxious about going back to school. So please try and find some time for yourself. Um, mindfulness is a great thing for you to be doing. 
please take some time off social media because it's generally not very helpful. I know I'm literally shooting myself in the foot as I say this. Please try and get some exercise because it's a great thing to help basically in everything and the same with doing lots of sleeping um so guys if you've got any questions um i'm gonna try and find someone um to collab with to answer all your questions about vaccines so just drop them down below for me